Bigfoot Researcher's Journal today. We're uh, we're gonna be going in here with Captain Brian. This is his research area, and uh, I'd like to dedicate this episode of the Bigfoot Researcher's Journal to my late great partner, Kerry Arnold. The Bigfoot Researcher's Journal. Brian walked us into some really interesting habitat, like this. This is a trail that literally was cut through, and it was a series of interconnected tunnels. As you can see here, this is orchestrated. We're going inside their habitat, and there are trails leading in different directions. Each one of the trails that we followed came out at a significant tree. And there was evidence that something had been pulling and climbing the trees, as well as manipulating their way through this entire habitat. Right they were all the path. So somebody's been walking back here taking shits? No, they're like massive shits. They're like this long and like this big around. Wow. Oh, it's dark in here. I can't see shit right now. No pun intended? Yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> no, I don't know where they're at. That's a liquor. Here you go first. Got full on trails going through the forest, guys. To the it's incredible. To the Florida dense bush. Yeah. You can see they're all broke off at the ground and the trail's been created. Don't get many opportunities like this when you're in the field. And, uh, and I have a reliable small camera that's called the DJI Osmo. Get one. Images like this are not easy to come by. Clips like this are what add critical information to your ability to capture these creatures on film again. Here in this clip, we can see the symmetry and bone structure of a very young Sasquatch. Stick around, after the film, I'm gonna break it down in detail. Here's the breakdown in slow motion. Keep in mind through this slow motion breakdown that Brian's been in this area interacting with these creatures, hearing their vocalizations, getting knocks when he knocks to them. One of the first times he went to this place, he heard children playing out in the swamp, laughing loudly. In this frame, you can see the creatures flared its nostrils. There are strangers in its house. We show a lot of data on diffusion interacting with these creatures' skin. You've seen hundreds of images from crypto reality over the last eight years showing these creatures with green colored skin. And those have been in extremely high sunlight research situations where we're documenting the creatures in the middle of the day. This is early morning and there is no sunlight. It was seven o'clock in the morning when we got there and it was overcast and raining. They have no chance to hide when the sunlight isn't there to conceal them. In low light situations, you can absolutely document these achromatically colored creatures because the phenomenon is not present. You can plainly see the achromatic coloration, the gray skin, the white tone or light gray skin of that creature. Look out. So I go look at that tree blocking the view. The roots are in the tree. Oh, yeah. From these little observation positions, you can plainly observe the levee and the surrounding areas. We found several of these spots. Each one 
the brush was manipulated so that the view could be optimized. You can plainly see this brush is pulled down. And from inside here, you can observe the levee without being seen, especially if you blend in. Bigfoot is pretty interesting. We well, got tracks. Big one. This is crazy. There's a, there's literally a tunnel going right out here, man. Oof. There it is. Holy crap. So we can't go. We hiked ourselves right up against a swamp. We had nowhere else to go but left or right. We tried a little ways in both directions and eventually backtracked to get out of the swamp. Sorry. I just, if I hear something, man, I point my camera, you know? I've learned that it doesn't matter. You might have just walked past him and he was just laying there trying to hide, you know? Yeah, we got a heavy, heavy urine smell. Mm-hmm. Good spot for a 10-foot or two. <laughs> you wanna try? You wanna go? I don't get it. Fuck it. Let's go, man. Brian said I'm from Bill Glade. We'll figure it out. Stay right back here. You know what I'm saying, I guess we're going. Yeah. I'm gonna Rudy to make the next. On to another basis. You guys have the ripples. They're going straight. And action. So this is why we go in and you know do this kind of work, work in the canopy inside where they are. Because now, when we come out and film, I don't have to penetrate them. I can just walk the road, and I know their hiding spots. We've been there. Yeah, well, I mean, they're watching the road, so technically you catch them on film just walking this levee now. Yeah, yeah. You just got to time it right and do it as many times as it takes to catch one in one of these observation holes. Yep, so we know where they are now. We know there's one down here by these purple flowers where there's a water bed. We know there's one further down. Oh, there's an opening. There's holes with sticks going across there. You can see it on film. Yeah. So we're in the editor and we're actively taking a look at uh, a young one that was near Brian and I when we were investigating a series of orchestrated tunnels through some bushes. And uh, as you can see, this creature's watching us. And, um, and it's little. It doesn't, I don't think this one particular uh, creature is bigger than maybe four feet tall, but um, it's definitely there watching us and uh, and it's just a little guy man This is that the nostrils right here And it's got the big Sasquatch wide nostrils there and the upper lip areas right here But it's kind of looking down its nose at me and this is you know the way that drastic uh, rectangular uh, Bone structure is around the eyes. It's, it's drastic. You know, you can can kind of make it out as he comes around right there boom He's like looking at me in both nostrils and you get the bridge of the nose here but he's he's got his head back kind of looking and this is not a uh, part of the creature this is a branch and it comes up and it goes right up through here now that thing actually moves as we move forward you can see he moves that thing out of the way something moves it it's in the background it's behind this green stuff and it comes up like that but uh it, it moves a little bit and then we get a real good look up the nostrils which is an interesting shot and it's looking down its nose at us but um, is it possible there are other ones there? Absolutely. I have, uh, you know, looked at the footage and there's stuff moving. I didn't ascertain that there was anything uh, that was worth pursuing. But in these frames, you can see this is the creature that we've been studying. And, uh, and it looks just like the 10-footer that I saw, 9 or 10-footer, from this drawing last year.
shot this footage while I was waiting for Brian at my truck. I heard a little bit of rumbling over there in the, in the bushes. And then I looked over and saw the kind of green movement, blurry, shadowy kind of stuff. And, uh, and this is what the Osmo picked up. I couldn't see it with my naked eye. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the Bigfoot Researcher's Journal. We'll see you next time. We're staring at Bigfoot hair, guys. And, uh, and you know, the interesting aspect and, and corroboration that this is indeed Sasquatch hair is the fact that we caught him on film right there where we were finding these hairs snagged in the branches. So this is where we found the hair, and you see Chad, he's up front pointing like he sees something. So I'm going to obviously follow through, and uh, we catch him on film. There's a, a couple of them, I think, but this one we got is a Sasquatch. There's no getting around it. Now, this first frame, he's still blurry, but as I kind of move around to try to get a better look over there, he comes out, and it's a Florida Sasquatch, man. I'm going to highlight him for you now and we'll add some contrast changes and boom, he just comes right to life. Watch this. Excellent shot. This is where we found the hair that we're looking at right now. I don't think that it's this sub-adult's hair. I think that... So today you're uh, you're gonna spend a little time with me in my editor. Crank up your brightness a little bit, and, uh, and we're gonna take a look at this Sasquatch that uh, that my wife filmed in uh, in my research area here, and uh, and I, I just want you to get a general idea for what I'm doing and how I'm doing this because if you're going to be a successful researcher uh, and you're going to begin documenting, one of the things that you're going to have to do to begin ironing out the where you're going to catch them on film when they're observing you is you're going to have to begin uh, understanding that they are observing you and you just can't see them. Um, they will maintain a, a 70 to 90 yard distance from you uh, in the most unlikely places. And, and will just sit still or stand still and watch you. Um, but this guy, you can see, okay? There's a monster standing there. It's important for you to understand that at no point will Melanie and I be setting foot in this inside this tree line. We've been in there about 10 times. And when you're in there, you feel like you need to leave. Um, I'll just put it that way. And, and now, after two years of going in there, my wife goes alone and we find out why we feel like we need to leave. These things, you can feel their presence. They have a huge presence and it's no secret why. Uh, this line right here, the tops of these palm fronds, see these are palm fronds, that's cabbage and saw palmetto mixed together. But these particular ones are saw palmettos poking up here. This right here is about 10 feet. So right about here is about 8 feet. This is the 8 foot line. And I know that because I've stood back here in this particular area. And it's about 2 feet over my head. I can't see over this into the, in, in any of these directions. Like if I'm standing at, against this tree, you can't see my head. It's somewhere around here, but back against this tree. There's a three foot, 3 foot depression in here. Where he's standing is probably about 7 to 10 feet into the tree line, right behind this tree, right next to it, but behind it, behind it, beside it. Um, and he's in, he's in the water. This guy's standing in the water. That creek bed's full right now. Now you can see this right here, and, and we've got, you know, we've got, you can see, actually see tension in this dude's forehead. He got the tension lines, he got the nostrils, and, and there's some plants and stuff going on here too, so. We gotta, we gotta watch this, and, uh, and we're gonna evaluate this, and we're gonna see what we can come up with. Now we're gonna bring it in a little bit, and uh, and you can see the ball of his eye. Now, in certain light conditions, they appear to have 
black eyes with like a white kind of a a ball and I think that that's not always the case um, now you can actually see that there's something here there's something here it's a nice defined edge but back to this eye the other one's just behind this plant there's a plant right here it's coming up and it's you know all in his face and this, they don't mind that shit I want to take you back and I want to show you now uh, some of these frames where you can actually see this thing's eyeballs. And, uh, and it really is spectacular. When you get a good look at this thing's eyes, you're going to be like, what? Uh, I think we need to be a little bit further forward. Uh, get up here, we'll find it. I already set aside a frame for you so you can see it. It's not it. That's a good frame, though. Oh, there it is. Okay, now, when we look at this right here, plainly, you can see his nostrils. Uh, he's got little nostril action, his little fat nose. But this this is going to be, these are his eyes, right, right here. It's a bulge, and part of that plant is, like, covering his face. So you can't see his whole eye socket yet. That's changing, though. If you notice back here, uh, in this shot right here he's his head's kind of turned sideways a bit right you can see him right here and he's kind of got an angle on it but if you take the corner of the eye you've got muscular development in both directions perfect symmetry right we got a bulging muscle right here so right in here has to be his ear somewhere and what we notice is that a lot of these guys have what appear to be a donut or a small volcanic, volcano looking kind of corpuscle ish, pimply, you know, popped pimple kind of look to it. It's like a raised hole. It's an ear hole. You know, if you look at that shot, you can see he's got a little bit of an angle on it. And uh, and you don't see much white there. That, that son of a bitch looks like he's got black and then a white nocturnal kind of an eyeball that's light sensitive so essentially this thing is walking around and it is a nocturnal killer no doubt about it um, but let's advance and I want to show you the eyes again and we're, we're right here at the frame so I mean these are some pretty interesting frames man this you get you know you've got some really interesting shit going on here um, you can see this this thing's face has you know changed a bit and turned a bit but right now the plant moves out of the way a little bit you get a little bit of this eye and you can plainly see that it has huge pupils huge retinas and huge pupils and there is white on both sides of that 